What does SHIELD stand for, Agent Ward? Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. And what does that mean to you? I mean, someone really wanted our initials to spell out SHIELD. Hello, and welcome to a damn right show retrospective. Agents of SHIELD is officially in the books, and so closes the first wave of MCU-related Marvel shows. First one in, last one out the club. Like that Will Smith song. It's called Switch. Let's get it going. Today I'll be looking at all the things that S.H.I.E.L.D. got right and what it got wrong. And oddly enough a few of these cross over with one another and speak of the devil. Positive 1. Crossover with the MCU. As soon as Season 1 of S.H.I.E.L.D. was getting a little tired and formulaic, Captain America Winter Soldier was released, revealing all of the Hydra operatives rooted in S.H.I.E.L.D. and it extended to the show too. Grant Ward revealed himself to be an agent of Hydra, killed Victoria Hand, and boom, the dynamic of the show had changed forever. This was one of the best twists ever in TV history, along with Brendan Fraser's death in Scrubs, the finale of season 1 of 24, and the season 7 premiere of The Walking Dead. The show also featured crossover characters with Nick Fury. Sir? You don't have to call me Sir Coulson. Look at me. I'm just like I live under a bridge. Maria Hill, Lady Sif, and involved the cleanup of Thor the Dark World. Negative one. Crossover with the MCU. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. What I just listed was fantastic, but after season two, the connection seemed to just stop. Ultra may have been name drop, but that doesn't do a whole lot of anything. What was in there? Who or what is a man thing? I swear. It appeared that Disney decided to just close the gap and didn't want to share information between its TV and film divisions, which as we have heard, there was a pretty contentious relationship between the two anyway. It is quite jarring considering that there's such dissonance, knowing that Dormammu nearly merged the realms with the Dark Realm, Thanos snapped 50% of living life from the universe, but no mention of it whatsoever. Fitz does use the Quantum Realm, to time travel in the series finale, but there's no explanation of how it could possibly know about the quantum realm or how to access it. No explanation at all. Positive 2. The cast. It's example 3. That's how they kill themselves down Sure, calling two of the characters Fitz and Simmons was cheap, but that's the weirdness for you. They've never seen a fruit that was too low to pick. Going into the show, the majority of the cast were unknowns to me, apart from Clark Gregg, who was the driving force of the show, and Ming-Na Wen from the Street Fighter movie, and Mulan. But everyone seemed to gel immediately. The only character I didn't like was Ward, who, as previously mentioned, turned out to be a traitor, and totally redeemed his 2D character. Negative 2. What are we doing with Coulson? The mystery of Agent Coulson's resurrection was one of the main mysteries of the show. He was impaled dead by Loki in the first Avengers movie, but he was just swell for this. Anytime someone would mention Tahiti, his automatic response was to say, it's a magical place. You told me they sent you to Tahiti. It's a magical place. You mentioned that. Not everyone gets sent to Tahiti. It's a magical place. Honestly. Tahiti's too good to be true. I know. It's a magical place. <laughs> it was the Who Killed Laura Palmer of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Turns out they used Kree alien technology to bring him back to life, and that was that. Mystery solved. Later seasons appeared to write him off, like when he made an agreement with the Spirit of Vengeance and seemed to just die because of death. But then he was brought back a season later as Sarge, an alien that looked like him? Whatever. And then the next season, they used uh, the Chronicon technology to create a LMD, life model decoy of him, and he is a robot from here on out. Whatever. 
It just reminds me of Red Dwarf when Chris Barry left after two episodes of a six episode season and then he was back again full time for the next season. Positive, the special effects. Not to be confused with the costume or makeup because, well, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. clearly had a strong budget and it really shows, particularly in the space related episodes. It's strange because as the seasons went on and the being cancelled of the show was always a topic of speculation, they seemed to push for more spectacular visuals like the Earth being destroyed by Quake. Negative. Random bad guys. Well they can't all be winners now can they? I wasn't expecting the Red Skull or Nightmare or Enchantress, but I mean the villains for the most part were either nobodies or original characters, Kree princes that we don't care about, secret sons of Hydra villains, Chronicons. Uh, Amy. What do you want? Your face. That are just taking up all of my screen time and for no real interesting reason. Like what the hell is an IZEL when it's at home? Positive, the guest stars. Bill Paxton, need I say more? Okay, a few more. Carl McLaughlin, John Hanna, Ruth Nager, Patton Oswald. Marvel came calling and they answered. Negative four, no Avengers. We knew this would be the case. But after Samuel L. Jackson's appearance, we thought that we might get a cameo per season. Is that really so much to ask? See, as fans, we hoped that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to be the backbone of the MCU, the animatrix to the Matrix movies, filling in the gaps between movies and rewarding us with early introductions of new characters. Clark Gregg shows up in the technically prequel movie Captain Marvel, but at no point mentions her. Bring her in, man. Characters like Absorbing Man and Deathlock were brought up, but seemingly no plans for them in the future. Positive 5. Friggin' Ghost Rider, man. Excitement word as people debated that a leaked promo showed that Season 4 was tagged Ghost Rider. Spoiler for 2016, it was. However, it wasn't your typical Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider, but the Robbie Reyes version, who drives a car instead of a motorbike. The soon-to-be Terminator, Gabriel Luna, played this version of the Spirit of Vengeance, and it was just badass. It wasn't as visually impressive as, say, Ghost Rider 2, but the plot and acting were far superior. My only question is that the Genesis, Terminator, is that it's usually Mephisto, Ni the Devil, that makes the agreement to save a loved one's life if the man agrees to become the host of the Ghost Rider. Yes. More than anything, yes. I was alive again. It was the devil. Whatever was inside him, he passed it into me. In this, it appears that the spirit of vengeance comes in the form of Johnny Blaze, which is weird because I understand it if it was a pass the torch moment. But Johnny Blaze is clearly not there. What's that about? Where's my Blaze at 420? Spin-offs were rumoured with Mockingbird and the British guy, Ghost Rider and New Warriors, but the books seem to stop at Agent Carter. Negative 5. Hive ruins Hydra. Look at the plight of this. I'm not a comic expert, and I know Hive is a real character, but the idea that they retcon Hydra they were basically so Nazi that even the Nazis did Nazi eye to eye with them. But they turn out just to be a bunch of cultists that worship an ancient inhuman hive. It felt like they needed an excuse to bring back that guy from that Shawn Michaels choir movie. The idea may have worked well in a movie where hive uses lash to kill anyone with an inhuman gene if they didn't join him. But why throw the baby out with the bathwater and kill off all of Hydra's credibility? So there you have it, my five main positives and my five main negatives that jump to mind. There may be some jarring ones that I missed out here, but ultimately, if they were that important, they would jump to mind. 
sound off in the comments what you think I missed out, and I'll see you in the next video.